Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video we're doing a front hub and rotor assembly complete rebuild. So that means also redoing the braking system that's attached to it. I'm going to do this on my brother's 1993 Ford F250. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, first thing that we need to do is take the tire off. Before we do that, get it in the air. So right now we have it on a jack. We will be transferring that to a jack stand as we get around to the other side. Uh, this uses a 22 millimeter on the lugs. I suggest that you use an impact driver of whatever flavor of persuasion. And there you go. Okay, first thing we got to do so that we can free up the rotor hub is we've got to take this caliper apart and get it off. And this is old enough that this still uses Ford's uh, slide clips, which are those guys right there. And the way to get those out is get yourself something that's kind of rectangular, get it that will fit inside of there like a 3 8 extension and a hammer, and then just knock the clip out at the top. And then... There's going to be a clip at the bottom, same deal. We're also going to need to remove the brake line over here. And once those two things are out of the way, there's going to be a couple of bolts after we unload the caliper. And then we should be able to pull it free. Okay, working on the bottom slide clip. There it goes. Uh, show you where the groove is up top. And what we found out that works really well is take a one half extension to knock it into the housing like so and it may fight you particularly the bottom because it's now holding all the weight but once you get it inside the housing switch to a 3 8 which can also slide in and you can finish pushing the, the clip out so my brother just got it out but uh, the banjo bolt right there that's a 9 16th, letting you know. Since we're doing a full brake system overhaul, we're going ahead and removing this soft line. And into the soft line, at the end of it, there's a junction block. And there are two hard brake lines going into it. The one that my brother's removing right now, that is a 7 16th. And I suspect the other one is also a 7 16th. That's a fairly common nut size for brake lines with Ford. So we're just going ahead and getting that out of the way since we're already down here. And then we'll get back to the caliper. So guys, if your brake fluid looks like that, you may have a problem. That's one of the main reasons we're replacing these. Alright, dust caps. So there is a specific tool to pull dust caps. We don't have it. So what we're going to try to do is using a block of wood to prevent damage to the cap. We're going to use that and a hammer, move around in a circle, and try to tap, wiggle this cap out. And we'll let you know how it goes. Alright, so that was a success. And we've gotten the cap off. Didn't really ding it up that much at all. It's still very reusable. So, um, for all of you guys that are contemplating this job, I took just a piece of 2x4 we had, and I set up. I also uh, generously used PB Blaster around the seam where it's pressed in, right in here. You can see it's still a little wet, but I basically set up my block at about that angle and went tapping and moving and tapping and moving and it started to wiggle out and then I just started doing opposite corners until tap a tap out it came whoever did this last did not see fit to put any grease in the uh, dust cap so and by looking here under the castle nut and everything that grease is brown which means there was some moisture intrusion in there so 
it's going to need fresh grease and we're replacing the bearings anyway so it's going to get completely rebuilt packed whole nine yards yeah this whole rotor hub assembly is being replaced so anyway onwards okay next steps here are we got to undo the cotter pin and the castle nut take the castle nut out or the cover for the castle nut out and then take the nut out and then what that will let us do is slide the entire assembly off the spindle and it'll probably take it'll take both bearings with it and then we can start taking a look see how those bearings look and a word of, to the wise at about this point prepare to get greasy because anything beyond this point gets really really greasy whether it be you're packing bearings or you're shoving things in place so lots of paper towels and some patience are going to be required beyond this point There's one. okay so slid the nut out it was not even quite finger tight so not a big deal um it's a 27 millimeter don't have anything in sae big enough but 27 works and then there were two shim is it just one shim washer? Just one shim. One shim washer, and then that is the inner bearing. Right there. It's just got some wear. It's pretty loose. Yeah, I heard it clanking around, so yeah. It's a Timkin. It's a good bearing. Yep. So that's out of the way. And at this point, the it may be sticky, maybe not. Wish I had better light. This thing's being ridiculous, but uh, you can go ahead and start wiggling the rotor hub assembly off, and that should bring with it the outer bearing, which is on the other side. Alright, so came right off. Here's the back. Here is your wheel seal, which keeps bearings and grease from squirting out the back, mainly grease. There is the outer bearing inside of it. And when we look in here, there's definitely grease, but it's definitely old. And it was time for a replacement. And over here, on the spindle side, eh, looks okay. Got some rust. Got, That's where the bearing race sat. Yep, so it's okay. Definitely could be better. So next steps are to get this whistly clean. And then we got to pack some new bearings and then get some bearings installed. Get the wheel seal installed and then we'll get the whole rotor hub assembly back on the spindle all right so we actually broke down and because we're suckers and bought an actual bearing packing tool so what we're doing right now is loading it up with some grease it is valvoline multi-purpose grease it is applicable for brakes so it'll work um if you're doing this by hand, there is a different way you can do it. You don't need a fancy tool. And if you guys have interest, I will make a video about that. Packing bearings by hand. I've done it before. But uh, I want to try out the tooling too. So we'll show you how the tool works. We'll show it in action once we get it prepped. So you might be asking, why is it so important that we get grease in these bearings? Well, as you can see, there's a bunch of roller bearings in here, and it lets it spin while sitting on the spindle, so the spindle itself doesn't have to spin. This lets the wheels turn, the tires move. And nothing in this world is perfect, so friction is made, which makes heat. And unless you got something to help <clears throat> lower the amount of friction that's made, this metal will rapidly heat up enough that it will distemper, and when it distempers, it gets soft. Once it gets soft, it begins to buckle and warp, and then it fails. And then your wheel locks up against your spindle at 60 miles an hour as you're going down the road, and it's not a pretty thing to happen. So that's why it's very, very important that you've got good grease fully inside all these little holes that you see between the two rings of the bearing. And that's why <clears throat> we pack them with grease. Alright, so to use this tool, pretty straightforward. You're going to put the bearing narrow side down, which is what you see. 
and then it has a handle slash plunger that you screw in place on top like so and then once you got the bearing pretty much centered you start to push and what it's going to do is force grease through the bearing and when you see grease coming out the top you're good to go just like that and I can tell you from the exertions the silent struggles of my brother you got to push pretty hard I was afraid that he was gonna pop a gasket but when you see that when you see grease coming out the top you're good to go and now this bearing is ready and that is a significantly less messy way of doing this than doing it by hand now that we have a packed bearing, next step is to get the bearing in position on the back side of the rotor hub. And then we'll have to install the wheel seal after we get it seated. Also, one thing to definitely check, and let me show you this, we had to check it ourselves. Make sure you know whether or not you need a race, which is a metal ring that goes on the outside of the bearing, when you get your stuff. It's what the rollers roll on. Yep. So, it's a highly precision machine surface so sometimes a rotor hub assembly will come with the race pre-installed sometimes it won't that's something that you need to check and figure out before you start working on this because if you need a race pressed in you got to get that done first you can also buy bearings that come with or without races depending on whether or not your rotor is going to have a race in it and in our case, this rotor came with a race pre-installed, pre-pressed. So all we had to do was grab some bearings that were just the bearings alone. But do check that because if you don't, what's going to happen, and I did this once when I was a young man, is you're going to put everything back together and you're going to think you did great and amazing. And then you're going to grab the wheel and it's going to shake and go clunk, 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 clunk. And then when you put the vehicle on the ground and you think everything's good, the tire's going to go... Oh, it's going to go... Wah. And, yeah, you'll destroy things very quickly if you try to move around without the race installed. So, can't emphasize enough. Make sure you're good with that before you go any further. Alright, so we've got the seal pressed in. And we used the same block of wood from earlier. And this is a, a metal cup from a, uh, a ball joint press kit that I have. And the importance of it is that it fits just right around the sealing lip and sits on the meat of the seal so you can press it in. If you don't have something like this, whether it be metal, PVC, something, it's going to be rough to knock this guy in because if you try to go in a circle, nice and slow, um, there's enough resistance that it just makes it pop up somewhere else and it's really difficult to get it started. If you can get it started, it's not so bad, but it can be hard to get started. So this is in, this is good. So at this point now, uh, we can go ahead and take this uh, rotor hub and get it back on the spindle. So what we did here is after inserting the wheel seal, went ahead and gently got this rotor assembly back in and once we got it seated on the spindle, we went ahead and reinserted the, or well, inserted the front bearing and then put the shim washer back on. And now we're going to seat everything by putting the nut on and then you tighten it up until the rotor will not spin and then we're going to back it off but it's important to get everything seated and it's a 27 millimeter on the nut so here is some more footage on how to set the preload to get the bearing seated and then backing it off and bending out your brake shield so it doesn't rub
Back it out. Make sure you don't back it all the way out. You got to keep it the hole for the cotter pin exposed, so you can feed the cotter pin through. Uh, if you're all the way back, the cotter pin too far out. Yeah. And make sure that you've got good grease in there. And, and be then, prepared for the grease to get everywhere. Because and then just continue with reassembly. Alright, so at this point we've got the castle nut back in. Zoom in on that. Cotter pins back in. And then you bend the ends out of the way so the cotter pin can't slide out. And also when you're looking at a rotor, always check it to see if there's any finishing oil on it. That has to be removed before you install the caliper and new pads, which we took some brake cleaner, sprayed that off. You spray off the back and then uh, go ahead and put the caliper back on with some fresh pads. So to get the back, because there was stuff in the way, I just took a towel, wetted it with some brake cleaner, and then rotated the rotor and wiped the back side. And that's why you do it. This is what came off. So now it should be good to go whenever pads go to bite on and do that thing where they transfer material and make a good braking surface. Alright, we've got the dust cap back on. Uh, key thing here, same as before, block of wood and a hammer. And just kind of work your way around and kind of ease it in there. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And also, one thing to do before you put the cap back on, throw a little grease in the cap. You stick it back in there. That way you got enough grease in the system to keep everything lubed for many, many, many miles. So that's going to do it for the rotor and hub on this side. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall a new caliper with pads and hopefully new slide clips. Hopefully. If we got to reuse the old ones, we can, but hopefully no. Alright, we are loading up the caliper here, and the trick to getting these installed is kind of drop them down in the middle and then slide them to their respective side. And as far as the orientation for installing the caliper itself, remember the brake bleeder, that little guy right there in the black cap, always faces up because it's relying on gravity so if you install it where it feels right and the bleeders on the bottom you probably have the pad the caliper for the other side passenger and driver driver and passenger that kind of thing so you load it with pads and then you gotta kind of slide it wiggle it onto the rotor and then there's a retention I'll call it a clip sure I'll call it a clip that needs to get in there to help hold the pads in position so you can load everything okay so here we are it's on so you can see we're getting ready to get these slide clips in one thing to note is these pads are not symmetrical they are sided, so when you get your pad kit, there's going to be two lefts and two rights. And they will not fit in their little grooves on the caliper if you do a right-right or a left-left. One of them's not going to fit. So pay attention to that. And as you can see, the retainer goes under there, comes down, looks like something on an EKG, and then tucks in under down here, and that's where it hooks. So then your next challenge is 
getting these lovely slide clips to go in. And they can be persuaded, just be careful you don't accidentally mushroom the tip to where it won't fit. You may have to wiggle the caliper around a little bit as you're getting it in. That's one. So the top's in, I'm gonna do the bottom here. Oh, bugger. Yeah. Hang Looks on. like the whole thing needs to move back a bit. I, I can't see. Anyway, we're gonna work on that bottom, get back with you. All right, guys, so I've started to thread this in. Banjo bolt with brake line. Thing to remember is a copper washer is gonna go up top, a copper washer will go down below, and those act as crushing sealing surfaces, so when you tighten this up nice and tight, that it's not gonna leak. So keep that in mind. And one thing we noticed with this replacement brake line is it sends the soft line into the spring, so we're gonna have to modify on it a little bit to make this work. And I believe this bolt here is a 9 16 It'll behave. There it goes. Yeah, 9 16 Snug that up. Alright, so modification done. And by modification, my brother just grabbed it and yanked on it. His truck, so I let him roll the dice. And it looks like nothing broke. And now the soft line is no longer in the path of the spring. So we're pretty much done here. Uh, the last thing you would need to do is just put your tire back on. So we're going we're gonna to call this a complete repair. Alright guys, that's going to do it for our front rotor uh, brake and hub rebuild. I'm not going to film the passenger side because it is essentially the same thing. So, if you got a comment, leave a comment. I like to read them. I like to respond to them. I like to learn from them. Please also like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that fun YouTube stuff. And remember, I make the mistakes so you don't have to.